No, Starlink is not going to kill ham radio anytime soon. In fact, I'm going to argue that it complements it. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I wanted to talk about Starlinks and ham radio because I keep hearing the same thing coming up over and over and over again. And that's the fact that Starlink makes ham radio obsolete. And I'm going to have to beg to differ on this one, but you guys feel free to give your opinions down in the comments below. Now, the reason I started looking into Starlink to begin with was for my day job. We often work in remote locations, and I wanted to add the ability to have an internet connection regardless of what the cell phones were doing. My secondary use case for that is when we're traveling in the RV, it just gives me reliable internet regardless of where we happen to be, assuming you're not under trees, and that's a whole nother issue right there. But if you can get a clear view to the sky, you've got reliable internet regardless of where you happen to be located. But my other use case for this involves ham radio. Now, we'll talk about emergency communications here in a minute, but I want to talk about how we might use Starlink on a day-to-day -day basis while we're doing ham radio. And one example I can give you is the recent air show that we did. That air show that we supported brought in somewhere around 10, maybe 12,000 people into a very tightly congested area. You know, every one of those people, more than likely, also brought a cell phone with them. Well, what do you think that does to the cell phone network in that particular case? I got a couple of different reports of folks having a really difficult time even getting text messages to go out from the air show. And that's where Starlink really shined for us. I put Starlink on the RV. I just gotten it a couple of weeks before that, but I put it on the RV and that allowed me to keep track of the weather while we were at the event. Also, I had full access to whatever other internet we might need. Now, I didn't use it for the air show itself to do what we were there to do. For that purpose, we used voice and we used APRS. But having the capability to be able to track the weather, which we ended up getting several sales coming through that weekend uh, that ended up actually shutting down the air show on Saturday before the Blue Angels got to fly, having that ability to be able to track the weather without having to rely on the cell phone when that network is super congested was definitely a home run. So I think as ham radio operators, we just need to consider Starlink another means of communications. Even if you're just going to be providing communications for maybe a bike race or a marathon, if you're in an area with a lot of people where you have the potential for the cell phones to be overloaded, the cell phone network to be overloaded, you might consider Starlink just so you can keep track of the weather during the event. Now let's talk for a minute about Starlink when it pertains to emergency communications. And this really got brought to light, well, at least for me, after Hurricane Helene went through the Carolinas and eastern Tennessee. After that storm had passed through the area, many was left without any type of communications. And the only internet that was getting out in the worst hit areas was Starlink or some other form of satellite internet. But does that mean ham radio didn't play a part in the immediate days after the storm had passed? Absolutely not. That Mount Mitchell repeater was used extensively in the days following Hurricane Helene. But now let's consider for a minute the way we might pair those two together. Obviously, in an emergency operations center or an EOC, it would be a huge asset to have Starlink available to you. But you might not want to just limit that capability to the EOC. What if you, as the ham radio operator, had the ability to stand up a Winlink gateway connected to Starlink? Now you could have operators out in the field that would have easy access to a two meter gateway with Winlink, and we all know that that is much faster than trying to run Winlink over HF. 
What if you brought an APRS Digipeter online and tied that to Starlink to give it iGate functions? Now anyone within reach of that Digipeter that has an APRS capable radio can do multiple things. You can track where they're at. They would be able to send regular APRS messages. They could send SMS messages. They could check WinLink over APRS and they can even send emails through APRS to regular email accounts like Yahoo and Gmail. And let's not forget that Starlink also opens up Wi-Fi calling to anyone within Wi-Fi range of your Starlink node. Now, even if you don't stand up an APRS Digipeter or a WinLink gateway, you could always be sitting in the EOC taking voice reports from the field and then have internet access because of the Starlink to relay those reports outside of the area. Now, what about keeping Starlink up and running as far as power is concerned? Well, that's where we're already experts. We already understand how to calculate how much power consumption a device is going to take and how long we can run it from a specific sized battery. And then we also know that if we add solar to that, we're going to greatly extend the runtime. It's not, however, all sunshine and roses when it comes to Starlink. Just recently, about a week or so ago, July 24th, 2025, there was a massive Starlink outage that affected a huge swath of people. So you can't always rely on this 100% of the time, but it's still a really good asset to have available in your toolkit. Now, there is a bit of an upfront cost to get into Starlink. However, the monthly fees are not bad at all. I ended up going with the Starlink Mini. I happened to catch it on sale, and I only had to invest 300 bucks to get into that Starlink Mini setup. Now, my first month's service was $50 for 50 gigs. However, Starlink doesn't have any contracts and they allow you to pause that service and not pay any monthly fee when you're not going to be using the device. What I found out though when I went in to pause that service is they also gave me an option for $10 a month to get 10 gigs of data. And that's ultimately the plan I went with because each additional gig only costs you $1. So even if I use 50 gigs, I'm still paying 50 bucks for that month. And if I don't use it at all, well, it only costs me 10 bucks after the initial investment. So while I don't think Starlink is going to replace our radios anytime soon, I definitely think it's something that as communicators, we need to be paying attention to and possibly even incorporating into our setups. If you found today's information helpful, give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.